Hey everyone, Daniel here and welcome back to another video. I hope all of you are having a great day out there. As always, here today I want to sit down and fully analyze the opportunity with Corsair stock, taking a look at a base case, bear case, and bull case scenario to analyze exactly what I think about Corsair stock over the long run. I've been looking at Corsair a lot over the past couple of weeks and months and really trying to understand their business and a potential opportunity there on a very high level. And I think I've done that to an extent. And in this video, I want to highlight some of my thoughts and exactly what I think about Corsair over the long run. So if you end up enjoying this video and finding some value in it, please consider subscribing. Without further ado here, let's get into it. So when we look at Corsair stock, this is a company obviously involved in the gaming space. They make a variety of different, you know, PC components, keyboards, headsets, microphones. Uh, they have a different, you know, a bunch of different subsidiary brands like Elgato, which focuses on streaming, you know, making lights and a microphone, which I actually use uh, for the channel and I'm very happy with. So, you know, Corsair heavily involved in the gaming space, which is a expected to grow significantly over the next six years. From my understanding, high single digit percentage growth a year in and year out over the next six years, if not double digit growth. So the gaming industry continuing to grow. Corsair at the forefront of the gaming industry. And you know what we've seen with its stock price over the past few months is a major downtrend really since November 24th, when the stock went on a massive run after their IPO back in roughly September. Now, taking a look at Corsair, heavily involved in the gaming space. And one of the reasons as to why we've seen this stagnation in its share price, and it's you know pretty simple, it's fears that the gaming industry will dissipate over the coming years, that the COVID-19 pandemic prompted people to buy gaming equipment. And now after it's over, everyone's gonna, you know, not wanna buy headsets and keyboards and you know gaming equipment anymore. And at the end of the day, when you look at Corsair, it's a bet on the gaming industry. Do you believe that the gaming industry will continue to grow? And you know, from my understanding, you know, gaming has never thrived more than it is now. And in my opinion, you know, it only will continue to thrive over the coming years here. So, you know, at the end of the day, it's a bet on that. If you don't believe in the gaming industry, it may be worth it to look into a different stock. But, you know, if you're a believer that gaming is here to stay and, you know, is going to continue growing over the coming years, I think Corsair is a phenomenal bet. And we're going to take a look at this in a moment here. Now, when I look at YouTube as a whole, a majority of the channels, I'm not going to point to anyone specifically, you know, they do two things. They look at statistics. They say, oh, forward PE of 15.76. They take a look at some of their fundamentals and say, all right, the stock is undervalued. As you know, I am a numbers guy. I like to dig into the numbers. And what I'm going to do, I'm not just going to look at this forward PE here and try to analyze the opportunity through that. I'm going to look at my own numbers. I'm going to look at my own revenue projections, profit projections, and valuation projections to come up with a potential price target or a range of price targets looking out to 2024 to 2025. When I look at an investment, I generally like to keep it within a three to five year time frame, as you know, I don't have to worry about anything in the short term. I just look at business fundamentals. If the stock is undervalued, bang, there's opportunity. So now that we understand Corsair, the business model, again, feel free to check out their site, to check out their products on a higher level. Let's take a look at their actual fundamentals as a company looking more, you know, into their revenues, profits, and valuation. So looking at 2021. Management expects a phenomenal year. Obviously, 2020 was amazing. The COVID-19 pandemic, everyone locked inside. The ideal scenario for a company like Corsair. Now, looking at 2021 in, uh, you know, uh, Corsair's Q1 report, management upped guidance for 2021 to $2.1 billion in revenue on the high end. Now, in my opinion, Corsair... Ever since they went public, they have consistently beaten both top and bottom line revenue and profit growth at the company. So in my opinion, the chances of them hitting $2.1 billion in revenue in 2021 is very, very likely. And again, showcases that the pandemic is over, right? Or at least somewhat over in certain places around the world. But management continues to see momentum in the gaming industry. Sure, Q2, Q3, seasonally weak for a company like Corsair. But moving into the winter, I think, you know, 2021, 2022, there are going to be some phenomenal years for Corsair. And moving kind of beyond this pandemic, I think, you know, we're really, really going to rather see some more organic growth at the company that, you know, isn't really driven by this pandemic. But anyways, $2.1 billion in revenue. That's my expectation. And again, I haven't plugged in any uh, percentage growth here, which we'll do in a moment. We'll go through a bear case, base case, and then a, a bull case scenario. But looking at gross margins, operating expenses and taxes and a net income margin, currently the business is roughly at a 10% net income margin, or that's somewhat, you know, the ideal that Corsair gives when you look at their guidance for EBITDA and gross margins and, you know, operating income and whatnot. A 10% net income margin, that's roughly where they're at at this moment in time. Sure, if they're not, 
completely fine for pricing and some growth maybe into the back half of 2022, early 2022, or sorry, back half of 2021, early 2022. That is completely fine in my opinion. But when I look at Corsair and the guidance they've given, the company's at roughly a 10% net income margin. Keep in mind, 2020 was really the first year the company turned a major profit, or at least I say major, but a decent profit when you look at 2019, 18, 17. You know, it was, it was pretty much flat when you talk about net income. And 2020, that was really when they really start to focus in on net income and expanding their bottom line in that way. So when I look at Corsair, all right, 10% net income margin, that's where they're right now. But I think longer term, as they focus in on profitability and obviously being involved in the higher end gaming space, I think that could expand, which we'll take a look at in a moment here. When we talk about my bull case, but you know, 10% net income margin, that's where they're at right now. Now, talking about potential growth, let's go through a bear case scenario. First and foremost, what is the worst case scenario for Corsair stock? I think this is something that we all have to do with every single stock that we own. If everything goes wrong, how much money do we lose? And in the Corsair, it's actually pretty interesting. Let's say 2021, all right, they hit $2.1 billion in revenue. I'm pretty dang confident in that. But 2022, all right, the gaming industry takes a bit of a hit. Corsair's revenue declines by 5%. Now, Moving beyond that, I think it's very unlikely that revenue we will decline further than that. So let's assume potentially 5% revenue growth for 2023 to 2025, leaving or leaving us with roughly $2.3 billion in revenue by 2025, only just under a 10% increase in revenue over the next five years. Absolutely ridiculous in my opinion, but $2.3 billion in revenue and maintain that 10% net income margin, which is kind of currently where the Corsair is at. Again, in my opinion, that will grow moving forwards. But again, assuming that conservative net income margin of 10% and assuming revenue barely grows, you get net income of $230 million in 2025. Or, you know, if you look at their current valuation, current share price multiplied by uh, the current shares of uh, outstanding, you get a current market cap of just under $3 billion. Take this number, divide it by that number, you get a forward PE of 12.8 using 2025 numbers. Now, the real question here is what will the valuation of Corsair be? Now, when you look at the stock market in general, the main baseline that I like to look at for a majority of value companies is a PE ratio of 20, right? Uh, 20 is generally considered the baseline in the stock market, but let's use again, a more bearish case scenario, price to earnings ratio of 15. Assuming revenue doesn't grow as much as we thought, assuming no expansion of net income margins, and you know, assuming a very undervalued valuation on a price to earnings ratio basis, you make 17%. So when I look at Corsair, in the worst, worst case scenario with revenues, profits, and valuation, I still end up making a little bit of money. Now, is that ideal? No, not at all, right? Uh, but when I look at a worst case scenario, that is not that bad. And this kind of adds to my point that when I look at Corsair, I see an opportunity with very limited downside and a lot of potential upside. So now that we took a look at the bear case scenario, we got that out of the way, sorry, uh, right before we do move out of the bear case scenario, if you kind of see the different valuations here, 20 price to earnings ratio, 25, 30, you can actually make some pretty good money over the next five years, 56%, a double up, 134%. But again, we're still looking at the bull case scenario. Let's take a look at the base case scenario. And the first thing we have to do here is change the revenue growth. Let's say 2022, again, in my opinion, the chances revenue declines at Corsair is very, very unlikely. Sure, Logitech is projected to have a decline in revenue in 2022, but you need to consider Logitech is substantially larger than Corsair, larger than a factor of 10 X larger than Corsair rather. Uh, so when we look at Corsair, again, the fact that they're continuing to expand their product lineup, increasing the amount of brands they own, I think there's a large chance we will see continued momentum in revenue growth throughout 2022 to 2025. So again, let's be a little bit more optimistic here. Let's do, no, not 500%, that would be nuts, eh? <laughs> no, but 5% revenue growth. And let's say we kind of build momentum into the back half of uh, 2025 here, 5%, 7%, 8%, maybe let's get 10% here in 2025, again, as they expand their product lineup. And, you know, you have a little bit more bullishness here when it comes to, uh, you know, revenue growth. Maybe you see a bit of margin expansion when it comes to the bottom line, maybe to a 12% net income margin. In that situation, I see a very, very likely scenario where 
Corsair stock is valued anywhere from $70 to nearly $100 per share, a median of maybe around $80 per share as a potential price target. Again, using that base case scenario, very interesting. And we do have to keep in mind that if revenue accelerates and margin expansion does occur, the chances we see a higher valuation on the PE ratio is very, very likely as the company growing faster will more likely than not have a higher valuation. Keep in mind, currently, Corsair is valued dirt cheap because obviously the market is pricing in that potential uh, for a Corsair slow or rather, sorry, a COVID slowdown or a COVID exit slowdown in revenue. But, you know, once that fear dissipates, I think a PE ratio of 20 to 25, again, very likely for this company, at least in my opinion. So again, you see that base case scenario, anywhere from maybe a two to maybe even over a three X in the stock price of Corsair here over the next five years despite very, very limited downside. You can't find that much in the stock market. So now that we took a look at the base case, let's take a look at the bull case scenario for Corsair. And this is where things get very, very interesting. All right, let's assume 5% revenue growth in 2022. Let's be a little bit conservative on that front. All right, we're moving out of COVID-19. There might be a bit of revenue slowdown at the company, but moving forwards from that, let's say we accelerate revenue 5%, 8%, maybe 10% in 2024, and finish it off with 12% in 2025, ending with just under $3 billion in revenue by year 2025. Again, it's very difficult to project exact revenue growth for this company as we don't have much guidance. Uh, but again, just under $3 billion, very, very likely could even be conservative at this company. On top of that, let's assume some more margin expansion. Again, the company just turned relatively profitable and being involved in the high-end gaming space, very, very likely that we see a potentially even more margin expansion over the coming years. As again, they focus in on profitability as a company. We then see a scenario where Corsair stock over roughly the next five years potentially has the opportunity to be anywhere from a three to four X opportunity. This is where things get interesting, guys. When you compare the bear case to the bull case, you have an opportunity where Corsair stock has the opportunity that is presented with a lot of growth stocks out there, but it has the downside that even a lot of value stocks out there do not have. So it's almost like you have the best of both worlds with Corsair. And I think that's what makes it very interesting from an investment opportunity. Now, again, the main risk right now is this potential impact that, you know, uh, COVID might have on a bit of a revenue decline in 2022. But past that, once that risk is gone, I think the valuation of Corsair will move back up to something comparable to a Logitech, which again is in that roughly 20, 25 price to earn, or even maybe even a 30 price to earnings ratio, which you know does present a lot of upside for Corsair. So when we talk about what I'm doing with this stock, I see a lot of opportunity here with very limited downside. I've said this many times in this video, a lot of opportunity with very limited downside. That's why it's very interesting. I normally don't invest in companies that don't have very, very strong revenue growth, but I think Corsair, again, they have the upside of that growth stock. They have that potential, but they have very, very limited downside, which will decrease volatility within your portfolio, which again is a very big positive. And let me preface this. I'm not a financial advisor. Nothing I say in this video is financial advice. It should be considered such. Consider it entertainment. But when I look at Corsair, this could be a very interesting addition for my portfolio. Or, you know, looking at the, like, kind of, like the price to earnings ratio using these numbers, looking up to 2025, you know, how likely is it that Corsair is going to be trading under a price to earnings ratio of 10 or 15, maybe even 20. So although call options, I'm going to mention those, I know uh, some, there is a bit of controversy around the call option space, whether or not it's worth it, more of a gamble, maybe not, but, you know, looking out to even 2023, the numbers are in favor of Corsair. And, you know, I, I wouldn't be opposed to maybe starting a position that is, you know, maybe a split between stock and, you know, 2023 options for Corsair. But, you know, I see a lot of opportunity here. And I very well might add this to my portfolio over the coming weeks or months if I do end up getting some more money as a very low volatility, but high upside play. Anyways, guys, thank you all so much for watching this video. If you found some value in it, please consider subscribing. And also, let me know what you think in the comment section down below about Corsair. I think there is a lot of opportunity here, and it's a very interesting company. So anyways, let me know what you think in the comment section down below, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.